Hi, my name is Ram Srinivasan and I'm a professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org. Today, I want to talk about common Scrum misconceptions. And the reason I want to talk about these common Scrum misconceptions is because I see a lot of Scrum police going around and beating people saying, hey, this is not Scrum and you're not doing Scrum as per the Scrum guide. And somehow these myths have propagated so much that people don't know what the Scrum Guide says versus what is common sense versus what is a myth propagated by the Scrum police. So the first misconception is that the dev team should be co-located. The Scrum Guide does not say anything about the dev team being co-located. Sure, if you have a co-located team, uh, that's much better than having people in different locations, which is probably much better than having people in different time zones. You know, latitude hurts, but longitude kills. But the Scrum Guide is not prescriptive on whether the dev team should be co-located or should not be co-located. So the next time you hear someone say that the dev team should be co-located, ask them to point that out in the Scrum Guide. The second misconception is that all dev team members should have all the skills necessary to build the product. And uh, in reality, it might be a good practice and a good commonsensical approach to have multiple team members have multiple skills, but the Scrum Guide does not say that multiple team members need to have multiple skills or all the team members need to have all the skills. What the Scrum Guide says is that the development team should be cross-functional such that they can build a product increment by the end of the sprint. Now, when we really say team, we're really talking about interdependency. And this cross-functionality ensures that the team has all the skills necessary and because different people have different skills and different level of proficiency even within those skills, there is a natural interdependency between the team members to build the product increment. And that is the reason why we have a frequent daily inspect and adapt event called Daily Scrum so that people can help each other, people can learn from each other towards building a product increment. The third misconception I very frequently hear is that one person cannot play multiple roles in Scrum. Now, from a common sense approach, I would agree that one person cannot, or rather one, it is not ideal for one person to play multiple roles, but the Scrum Guide doesn't prevent you from doing that. If you are a startup and you are the CEO and you happen to be the product owner as well, rightly so, and you also happen to be part of the development team coding, that's perfectly valid implementation of Scrum. You are playing a dual role and that's okay and that may be optimal given your circumstances. But as you kind of keep growing larger into a larger organization, maybe from a common sense point of view, it might be suboptimal. The challenge with one person playing dual role or all the three roles is that a lot of times you have to switch to different stance for a specific role and you lose that stance effect you lose that stance's effectiveness when you are playing dual roles because people don't know whether you are speaking it from a product owner perspective or a development team member perspective if one person is playing a dual role and also there is like a natural tension built in in scrum between the product owner scrum master and the development team member and if one person starts playing a dual role you know that natural tension somehow goes away okay uh, Scrum Master being part of the development team or one person being a Scrum Master and the development team member, you know, the Scrum Master loses the stance of neutrality when facilitating events. Okay, and so you have to be careful about what you are saying or what you are asking for when you are really kind of saying people cannot play dual roles. Uh, in many organizations, a real concern is also payroll. So if you hire a dedicated Scrum Master for a team of seven people, and you're a startup, that's a huge payroll cost. So you got to be cognizant about those factors as well. The fourth one is that the development team members have to be dedicated to the development team. And this is again a misconception and a myth 
And it is a great idea, great commonsensical approach to have dedicated team members. They are not actually having context switching and uh, they are really fully dedicated to the team. It's a great thing. But under certain circumstances, for example, uh, the organization is not having many people with UX skills. It is perfectly valid for one person to be shared across a couple of development teams. Now, having said that, the more number of teams a person has shared, it's kind of starting to create constraints for all the team but sometimes it may be valid for one development team member to be shared across two or three teams again scrum does not say that the development team members should not be shared and so don't let the scrum police beat you up saying that the development team members cannot be shared across multiple development teams the next misconception i want to talk about is uh, user stories belong to scrum and uh, that is again a misconception uh, writing a good product backlog item and the art of writing a good product backlog item belongs to Scrum. User stories are one way of writing a product backlog item, but it's not the only way. And so you can write your product backlog item as long in any format you like. You can write your product backlog item in any format you like as long as there is a business value associated with it and the value is transparent to the product owner so that they are able to order the product backlog item. You need a brief description, uh, you need estimates, and it's ordered by the product owner or the product owner can delegate some of those things to the development team as well. But ultimately, you don't have to write every single product backlog item in the format of a user story. The next misconception is uh, sprint burndown charts are scrum artifacts and you have to do it. No, there are multiple ways of tracking the progress during the sprint. It is true that the burn down charts were actually part of Scrum uh, quite a few years ago, but currently we have many practices which we can use to track the progress of the work during the sprint. So you are not just restricted to burn down charts. You can use cumulative flow diagrams, you can use burn up charts or anything that you feel is valuable. Okay. A lot of electronic tools force you to use a burn down chart and that might actually not be the best thing for the team. So if I were the scrum master, I would tell the team, hey, use whatever actually is appropriate for you, to, which helps you track your work. Ultimately, the bottom line is the team is able to build the product increment and whatever, the, whatever tool they are using to track it, they're actually finding meaning and finding it useful towards collaborating together and building a product increment. The last misconception I want to talk about today is that the product owner is the one writing the product backlog items, usually can attribute it to write the user stories. Again, this is a misconception. The product owner need not write the product backlog items. The product owner can delegate anything and everything to the development team including splitting the product backlog items, ordering the product backlog items, going and getting clarification on the product backlog items from stakeholders, doing market research, doing product discovery. They can delegate anything and everything to the development team, but ultimately the product owner remains accountable for maximizing the value of the product that the development team can deliver. The product owner remains accountable for the value that the development team can deliver but they can delegate many 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 things to the development team and so you got to really see how much the product owner is empowering the development team and this is a crucial issue especially when it comes to scaling because the relationship you have between the product owner and the development team will determine how well you can scale scrum so here is a bonus misconception for you. Each development team has their own product backlog and that is incorrect. Okay, you have one product, you have one product owner, and then you have one product backlog and multiple development teams can work from the same product backlog and they might have their own sprint backlog. Okay, and when a product owner is working with multiple teams, it is very common for the product owner to delegate many of those things around clarification, getting details, splitting the product backlog items, 
uh, estimating those things you know obviously estimation is always done by the development teams um, product owner delegates many of those things to the product owner especially in a scaling environment because if you really start writing the product backlog items by yourself you're just going to be a scribe writing product backlog items all day long and if you're just being a scribe writing product backlog items all day long how are you actually going to do market analysis competitive research win-loss analysis Okay, so the product owner is ultimately accountable for the success of the product and so the product owner can delegate many of those things to the development teams but however the accountability remains with the product owner and remember even if you're having multiple development teams working on the same product you have one product then you have one product owner one product backlog multiple development teams work off of the same product backlog thank you very much